like that there. So, hello everybody, can you hear me okay? I'd like to say, first of all, congratulations to everyone who's graduated from St Mary's University today. As, I, as um, he said, they are graduated in 2008 with a degree in sports science, and when I got the letter through the post, it arrived at my office with the, the letter, you know, St Mary's University. I thought, oh no, I owe more money, they're coming after me, but I did pay off my student loan. It took me eight years, but I got there. And um, I'm really nervous public speaking, so this is like a really scary thing for me to do, but I thought, there's so many of you out there in the audience that will know exactly what you're doing, you would have smashed your degree, you've got your sat nav on, you know where you're going, you know how to get there. But there'll also be a lot of you in the audience that are feeling confused and a bit worried and sort of unsure about what you're going to do, where you're going to go. And the question that Francis was asking everyone was, what are you going to do next year? What are you going to do now you've graduated? And um, a lot of people nodding their head going, I don't know, I haven't got a clue, I don't know what I'm going to do. And that was how I felt for so many years. Um, I called it the quarter life crisis. Between the age of like 22 and 25, I didn't know what I was doing, didn't know where I was going, and I went travelling and kept running away and kind of earning a bit of money. I was labouring, um, worked in a bar. But ultimately, I know it's a cliche, but when you find out what you love to do and you're passionate about something, then success can come really quick. Because my career is actually only three years, but it's been a lot of work behind the scenes. So I wanted to go back to the beginning and explain yeah, what my ambition was in the early days, because I come from a working class family, my mum's a social worker, my dad's a roofer, and um, me and my brother Nicky were the first two people to go to university, and um, I always thought I was going to be a PE teacher, that was why I did the degree in sports science, um, I came out of university with the degree, and I was like, well I've got a degree in sports science, but I don't want to be a sports scientist, I can't teach, because I didn't have a person, you know, the, the one year um, PGC, I couldn't get on the GTP, like, because every time I went for the interview, they could tell that I didn't want to do it. They could see through that I wasn't ready for it. It wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I bummed around a little bit again, went travelling, grew my hair. Never, I haven't cut it since. And um, I, I thought, I'll work as a teaching assistant. I'll go into a school. I signed up a teaching agency. And I, was, I remember just not being very happy. And I thought, I've got to do something. I've got to have a crack at something. So um, I worked as a teaching assistant in a really rough school near the Cambridge Estate in Kingston called um, King Athelstan and they were going through like special measures with Ofsted, really naughty kids and um, I remember thinking this is hard work, they were pulling my hair, they were kicking me in the shins, nicking my lunch, they used to nick my food and I'd go to my lunchbox to eat and I'd have nothing to eat, um, so it's pretty rough but I realised after about nine months of that I thought I'm not quite cut out to be a school teacher and I think many of you might have done a degree and you might have signed up to that when you're 18 thinking this is what I want to do and maybe like a year into it you're like this sucks I don't enjoy this but you've persevered you've got it done so don't feel like it's a waste of time because it's really not and I think you should be excited by the change of direction you might you know my brother did law he never became a lawyer he works with me and helps with the, at the body coach and I think you should be excited there's so many opportunities out there so don't feel like you've done a degree and you might you might feel pressure to kind of go into that career in that in that job and that with that degree but really the world's so different now there's so many opportunities so don't feel like you've got to um you know necessarily do that um yeah and so when i had done my um after i'd become a teaching assistant i was doing that for about nine months and i thought this ain't this ain't right for me so i borrowed two grand off my dad and i went and did a personal training qualification um a six-week course called premier training where i learned to become a personal trainer came out of there really ambitious because I remember thinking this is what I want to do, I love exercise and I really love taking somebody who hates exercise on a journey to really enjoying it and getting fitter and I get a massive sense of achievement from doing that and that's what I do every day on social media. So, sorry. So, I did my personal training course and I sat down and I thought I don't want to work for Fitness First or David Lloyd, I, want to, I don't want to work for someone else and you know get paid £5 an hour and work really hard and that will be my job, I want to work for myself and so I sat down with a piece of paper and I wrote down all these words that, that meant fitness and health and motivation and I come up with this word, the body coach and I was like yes that's it, the body coach. So I set up a website, I set up a Twitter account and um, started a boot camp in Richmond called Rumble in the Park and at the time I didn't have I didn't have a single penny, like I literally borrowed a bit of money off my mum, went and got some kettlebells, got a few boxing pads, a few flyers and whatnot, started sort of marketing as best I could. And I couldn't afford a van, so I had a little trailer, this little like trailer that clipped onto the back of my bike. And I used to get up every morning at 5.30 and cycle from Surbiton all the way through Kingston. It was nice and flat all the way through Kingston. You get to like Petersham Nurseries and you've got that nasty hill. And I remember, it must have been about 70 kilograms just pulling this really heavy trailer. But I remember it was a really warm morning and I just said to myself, this is what I want to do, this is what I love doing. I felt like I'd finally found out what I was going to do and it was amazing because as soon as I got that dedication and that focus, 
my career just accelerated and I've just done so much in such a short time. So don't, don't be concerned if you haven't found out what you want to do yet because you will get there. It took me a long time, like I said, I was 26 before I even had a single clue about doing that and I'm now 31 so I've done a lot in such a short time. So be patient and explore, travel the world, don't panic about knowing exactly what it is you want to do right now today because it's fine, you're, you're going to get there, right? So I'd get to Richmond, yeah, 6 a.m., start my boot camp. I'd set all the stuff up, I'd have a TRX hanging on the tree, I'd run down there and put the battle rope around the other tree, I'd have kettlebells and 15 stations, I'd be like, because in my head, 15 people were going to turn up, yeah, every time. And sometimes, you know, nobody would turn, would turn up. Sorry. I always get really emotional when I tell this story, no matter how many times. So yeah, like, so some, I'd get there and nobody would turn up, right? And I used to think, I'd, I'd just be like, right, this ain't, this ain't, this ain't happening, I'm not going to give up, I'm going to keep going. And I would go to, uh, I'd pack up all the stuff in the trailer, and I, you know, rain or shine, I'd go to Richmond Station, I had a little flyer that I handed out, and I used to you know, get on people's nerves every day, they'd hate me, and they'd just be in such a rush, didn't want to see my face. And I'd be like, come to my boot camp, rumble in the park, you know, check it out, and maybe only 10 people would take a flyer. And I'd stand there for two hours, but if one of them came, it was like another client, it was another chance to grow the business, and I kept doing that, I just kept going back, and you wouldn't believe how many times I'd get there and there'd be nobody there. Like in, in the night, because I did it twice a day, so I'd, I'd cycle home, and then I'd be knackered, then I'd cycle back to, to Richmond in the evening and do it twice. Anyway, I kept going, and I built it up, and I, eventually it became a little business, and then I set one up in Surbiton, and I was sort of, you know, doing all right, and I thought, right, I've got my boot camp, and then I started doing some personal training, and I kind of got really busy, and I was having a great time, and I was loving it, I really was loving it. Um, but you do, you do sacrifice a lot of time. Being a personal trainer, it's like you're up early, you don't get much time at the weekend because all your clients want to train at the weekend. So anyway, I really cracked on for a couple of years and then I started to share some stuff on social media. I started posting um, recipes and stuff on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And then I had this idea one day, right? In 2014, it was December, I was in my flat in Surbiton and I, I wrote, I'm gonna I'll share a recipe and I'm going to do it in 15 minutes and I'm going to call it Lean in 15, right? So that was just an idea, hashtag Lean in 15, showing a 15 second video. And, you know, I had so many people like, friends of mine, really close friends were like, what are you doing? Why are you wasting your time? Get back to the boot camp. You're doing my nothing every night on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Like, chill out. It's boring, right? And so I didn't listen to them because I just was having fun and I just carried on, kept doing what I was doing, like with the boot camps. Every day, breakfast, lunch and dinner, I'd record it and share it on Instagram. I had no idea I was ever going to have a book deal or monetize my social media or create an online business. I really didn't and that, that's one thing I think everyone should learn, that lesson that it's not about making money. You shouldn't try and always think, I've got to make money, it's all about the salary. If you make a difference to someone and you make a change in someone's life and make them feel good about themselves, it, you, you can do amazing things and it will eventually come back obviously in success in certain different areas when I got the books and stuff but um, so I'm tweeting away doing my Instagram building that community suddenly I get an email from Harper Collins about wanting to write a book with me so I said I'm not really an author I've never written a book and I don't think to be honest that um, I'm a very good cook and they were like, nah, come and have a meeting with me. So I went and had the meeting, sat there with them, and they were like, look, we love you, you're doing really great things on social media. I had 50,000 followers on Instagram at the time, and I called up my friend Bev and said, look, Bev, do you think I should get an agent, or should I just sign up with these guys? She said, well, it's important to get a literary agent. So I, um, I got an agent, and it became like, a, they call it a blind auction, where publishers, there was eight publishers, were bidding for the rights to Lean in 15. And overnight, it went from a one book deal to a two book deal, and then I released it on Amazon pre-order and it went to number one like six months before it was out. Has anyone got a Lean in 15 book in here? Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my publisher just went crazy and was like, we've got to sign you. So I then got an eight book deal. So it became this huge thing. And I remember my mate at the time, a really good friend of mine says, what? Oh, like, I was really excited about the book deal and stuff. And he was like, well, you should have just done an app. No one buys books. Like, what's the point? Just do an e-book. And it really like, upset me on the, on, the, on the day he said that. And I thought, no, I'm going to go and do it anyway. And you know, Lean in 15 is, is now the second best-selling cookbook of all time after my man, Jamie Oliver, my hero, Jamie. Um, thank you. I'm still, my heart is, I feel like I'm doing a hit session. My heart is pounding so fast. <laughs> this is more, this is scarier than, than Guinness World Record we did in Hyde Park. 
So yeah, Lean in 15 has become this phenomenal success. And aside from you know the financial gains of that, that was never what it was about for me. I do book tours and I meet these women and these guys that have had you know bulimia and anorexia, or they've been overweight, or they've got diabetes, and they do these plans and they follow my ideas, and it's changing their lives. And that's what it's all about for me. Like even even today, I wake up and I do a Snapchat or an Instagram. It's it's always the same thing. All all I ever try to do every day is to get one person exercising and feeling good and to get one person cooking a healthy recipe. So, you know, I've solved a problem and that's what you should always think with your ideas is, you know, how can I solve a problem and, and give people something that's going to make them feel better and that's what you should always be when you're being entrepreneurial. And in the process of the whole book thing going on, which is pretty crazy, I released this online plan called the 90 Day Shift, Shape and Sustain Plan which is an online business selling tailored fitness plans, okay? So I did that in, in, a, in a way just to kind of Kind of like, you know, if I thought if I can get a few people to sign up, I can do less PT and have a little bit more time to myself and with my girlfriend and whatnot. And it's become this huge global company. Like, with, I've got 40 staff. It's a multi-million pound business. And it's just grown on social media. And my office now, I've got a 5,000 square foot office, like 20 meters from where I used to stand and give out the flyers in, in Richmond. So it makes me proud. Like, every day I go and I just walk past and I'm like, I can't believe I used to stand there annoying commuters. And now I walk up to this building and, it's, and I've, you know, I've got all these staff. It's, it's mad. And obviously, I'm really proud to tell that story. Um, so what I want to say is basically, I'm going to get to my final point now, is that so many people will say your ideas are no good and it won't work and it's been done before and there's already a body coach, so why go and do Instagram? Why go and share recipes? You, you know, you're copying someone. It always be yourself. It's never too late, okay? And secondly, you will get rejection. You're going to have doors slammed in your face all the time. You've got to be willing to like turn away, go and regroup, come back, knock again, keep going, because you, you can't just give up when you get, you get one, one knockback, and that's the, that's the thing with all entrepreneurs, I think. They just keep going, and they keep working and working. And yeah, another thing is, you know, if you are a bit, a bit scared and confused about going out into the real world, and you want to go and live in Thailand and live on a beach for six months, like, go and do it, have fun, because that's all it's about. You'll get there, you'll find out what you want to do in the end, but you should be really proud of yourself for doing a degree. I bet all your friends and family are buzzing. I was here in 2008, and I remember thinking, like, how epic this place was, and what a wonderful day, and I bet you're just desperate to get out of here now, because I'm sweating, and you're probably really tired. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll leave you with three things, okay, and this is three simple mantras that I live my life by, right? And if you do these three things, you can't really go wrong, okay? And um, I hope you've enjoyed my chat. I hope you found it inspirational and I hope you um, go out there and achieve your goals. But the three things I live by, okay, is three simple things. It's work hard, have fun, and be nice. If you do those three things, whether it's online, in social media, in the real world, in business, with your relationships, you'll do well, you'll succeed, and you'll have a great life. So good luck, everybody, and um, go and smash it. See ya.